How's everyone doing today? Thanks for making it bright and early, 9 a.m. I know probably a lot of you were out late last night, so appreciate you being here. Uh, I'm Nolan. I lead a lot of our Web3 efforts in Google Cloud, um, and I'm excited to talk to you about what we're doing, um, how we're helping Web3 developers build on top of Google Cloud, and also uh, introducing you to Nitesh, who's going to be um, talking about how they use um, some of our tooling and, and services. Um, so first of all, how many of you are Web3 developers or actively building in the space? Okay, one. How many of you like have played around with it and like at least have understanding of the basics? Okay, and then the rest of you are probably pretty new to it, so that's helpful. Um, awesome. Well, let's get started. Um, I think we'll we'll explain a little bit about what we're doing in Web3 and and what it's all about here. Um, so really quick. Um, I'm Nolan. Uh, I've been working at Google for about seven years, started on Firebase, worked on hotel search, and since 2017, I've been building with Ethereum and Solidity, building dApps on the blockchain. And last year, I was lucky enough to join the founding product team in Google Cloud, um, building specifically for this space. Um, and then with me, I have Nitesh. Sure, why don't you just introduce yourself real quick, and then we'll move forward. Is the mic working here? Oh, great. Hi guys, my name is Natish. Uh, very lucky to meet Nolan and working with Google Cloud. Uh, I originally went to Stanford, studied CS in cryptography, also minored in philosophy. Um, I started out in blockchain around 2020. Um, started off initially working in fintech before at a Toronto-based fintech, and then spent some time over at Alchemy, um, working on their basically node engine there, and then a super short stint at Coinbase before I started Axel and began working with the Google Cloud team. Awesome, thank you. And we're going to hear more from Natish in just a minute um, in how they use uh, Google Cloud and how they're building dApps. Um, but first, we'll talk a little bit about what is Web3, right? You hear that term a lot. You hear Web2, Web3. Um, so if we talk about Web3, when I talk about Web3, I like to think about it as the third iteration of the internet as we use it today. So if you think about Web1 being really about consumption, content consumption, only a small handful of people were creating content, like newspapers or publishers, and everybody else was consuming it. Um, so think like Yahoo, early Google days. And then we moved to Web 2. We didn't really call it that at the time, but it's really when we started having the masses create content, right? So blogging, social media, phones really accelerated this, and now everyone is producing content um, up for the internet, and, and there's a lot of people also consuming. But now Web 3 gives us an opportunity where in Web 2, where you, when you created the content, it wasn't really yours, right? You submitted it to uh, platforms, they monetized it, shared revenue with you. Web3 is really about you owning the content you create and you, can doing, you, you being able to monetize that on your terms and, and really having that ownership, being able to sell it, rent, rent your uh, digital assets. Um, so it's an entirely new world and it's pretty exciting. Um, so some of the principles around Web3 that make it really work are it's decentralized, right? And that really means that there's no central player controlling the infrastructure. You're, everyone can run some of the infrastructure and participate in that, which makes it really hard for a single entity to make decisions around you know, how this should work. Um, it's permissionless, much because you know, there's no single entity controlling things. Uh, everyone has access to this infrastructure and these applications. So that's really exciting. And then it's also trustless. You don't have to wonder like, you know, if I send this to somebody, is it gonna be there? You can trace that, you can see the data, you can verify that on your own. Um, and one thing that's really excited, exciting about Web3 is that payments are natively built into this technology, right? So before, you know, as the internet came about, a lot of our financial institutions started doing things online. That was like taking an old system and moving to a digital world. In, in Web3, currency and, and, and money are part of the technology. So you have programmable money by default, which is a whole new uh, uh, world. Um, so what has Google been doing in Web3? Um, you know, a lot of people probably don't know that we've been doing this for a long time. Even our timeline starts before what's on the screen. So we started indexing blockchain data and making it available in BigQuery in 2018. Um, and we continue that, those efforts. And we'll talk a little bit about that. Um, in 2020, uh, in February, we joined the Hedera Governing Council, and we're still members of that. Um, and we ran a validator for them. Um, and then 2021, we started helping a lot of Web3 uh, native companies with their workloads. Q4 of 2021, we actually did like an NFT launch for creators um, to, to reward them for their subscriber bases and things like that. 
And then as we started doing more and more with Web3, with our customers, whether they were Web3 native customers or Web2 companies making a shift to Web3, we realized there was a huge opportunity to build a product group specifically focused on Web3. And that's the team that I'm on. Um, later that year, last year, we announced the preview for Blockchain Node Engine, and we'll talk a lot about that product today. Um, that's now in GA, um, which is not on the screen. But in late last year, we also uh, announced a partnership with Solana, so we're really supporting that ecosystem. Blockchain Node Engine and a lot of our data products will support um, the Solana ecosystem. And then we also uh, announced that we're running a validator with Aptos, which is one of the newer blockchains with a lot of scale um, and low gas fees. And then later th that year, we also announced a Coinbase partnership. Um, so they're running a lot of their workloads with GCP. And then um, similarly, we're gonna be supporting the Polygon um, ecosystem. We also launched a Web3 startups program, which I'll talk about in a minute. So it's been a really busy year for us in the last like 18 months, um, and uh, a lot's been going on. Um, and our goal in Google Cloud is really to be the default place for Web3 developers to build, right? And we're really focused on enterprise-grade node infrastructure, making data really easy to access. Today, blockchain data is not, not very easy to access. It's not really optimized for querying. So we want to make it more democratized. And then we want to also help educate developers, Web2 developers, how to build on Web3, new, new users that have no familiarity with Web3, how, like what it means and what the values and advantages are. Um, so what does it mean to build a DAP? First of all, a DAP is a de decentralized application, right? So it's not an application that just lives on one server in the cloud. It's spread across that decentralized node infrastructure. Um, and it's a completely different way of building. And fundamental to building a DAP is reading and writing blockchain data, right? So to it's, you can think of it as a, a new database in its simplest form, um, except that database is decentralized and is all over uh, all of the infrastructure that's running nodes. And so the most fundamental thing you need to start building a DAP is an RPC node. Um, so that's uh, a node that lets you communicate with the blockchain to either read data or write data. Um, the Ethereum ecosystem has two kinds of nodes, um, a full node and an archive node. Full nodes store just the last 128 blocks um, while archive nodes store all the blocks, like the entire history of the blockchain locally. So depending on your use case, you might use one or the other. Um, and then, you know, if you want to, that's reading. If you want to write to the blockchain, you either send um, Ethereum, Ether, which is the native currency of the Ethereum ecosystem, to another uh, wallet address, or you can interact with a smart contract, which might write data to, to the blockchain. Um, but for any of those use cases, you really need this thing called an RPC node, which participates um, in the network and syncs data with the rest of the blockchain. Um, and it's not trivial to run one of these things, right? So first you need to get storage and compute, um, maybe in the cloud, maybe on-prem. Then you need to install the client software and make sure that works well. Then you need to wait for that client software to sync with the blockchain. That can take, you know, in worst cases, like months. Um, so it, it takes a long time because there's a ton of data. Um, and then you need to make sure this thing stays up or you know, you're effectively disconnected from the network. So that might mean restarting the machine or installing the latest version of the software. Um, so we saw this problem and we said, you know, Google has a lot of expertise running enterprise grade infrastructure. We can build something that helps a lot of developers in the space. So we built something called Blockchain Node Engine. It's a fully managed RPC node service, right? So we take care of everything for you. You click a single button in our UI or make a single call to an API. We provision the node, we install the right software, we sync it with the chain, we monitor it, we upgrade it for you, um, and we take care of all the headaches of running a node. We like to say we give you all the flexibility of a self-managed node without any of the operational overhead or headaches. Um, so we just take care of that problem for you. And it's fully configurable, right? So you can choose the configuration of the kind of node you want, whether it's you know, these things that are specific to the Ethereum ecosystem, a full node, an archive node, um, whether it's production mainnet or a development test net. Um, you can choose what region you want your node um, deployed in. That can be important for either performance or compliance reasons. Um, and then you know, this is enterprise grade. Right? What we hear from a lot of customers is, I use an RPC service, but it works 99% of the time. It's really not the reliability user's 
expect at this point in time, right? So we see our role as being able to elevate infrastructure for Web3 to being like that, nine, that five nines of reliability. Um, we give you cloud armor so your node's protected from DDoS attacks. We let you manage your own API keys with their own rate limits so you can um, distribute those to either your members of your own organization or outside of your organization. Um, and we have great throughput up to like 5K QPS. Um, and we've actually tested a much higher 10K QPS. Um, and you know, one of the things that we've heard, uh, this is one testimonial from ENS Labs. They're the ones who have that dot, power the dot ETH domain, if you've seen that. Um, and so they, they're using BNE now and they found that it works significantly better than the incumbent solutions that they were using um, and really helps them with performance and reliability, which is super important for, um, for ENS Labs. Um, and with that, I wanted to toss it over to Nitesh to talk about how Axel is using uh, Blockchain Node Engine. Thanks so much, Nalan. That was a super awesome overview. And as someone who previously used to work in node infrastructure um, over at Alchemy, which is essentially like a competing service, I can definitely say that I and our team has been super pleased with the experience Google's had to offer. How do I um, like change slides? Just use the computer. Oh, I can use this. Sweet. So for us, it was a pretty long journey in terms, you know, so to give some background on our company, Axel, we're basically a blockchain infrastructure company focused on DeFi. So we built APIs to help developers integrate blockchain-based finance, essentially DeFi, into their applications and services really easily in just a few lines of code. So if you want to be able to read DeFi data like critical prices, stats, if you want to be able to do right actions like Nolan mentioned, being able to you know, lend money or swap currencies, um, stake, for example, you guys may have heard about that in the Ethereum staking ecosystem. You can do that all through our API without having to write super complex smart contract infrastructure and spend up to days and weeks managing your own infrastructure. Um, so for us, we had a pretty long journey in terms of trying to understand who the best node provider was and how could we get our needs met. Um, we required quite a bit of data, just because, as I mentioned, we're a read-write service for DeFi. So we have a lot of data that we need to obviously store and provision as well as serve to our customers in a really low latency way. So for us, we needed a node that would give us the full suite. And we started exploring the market, you know, whether that was Alchemy, whether that was Morales, Infira, any of the other kind of different node providers, just from like a, a user perspective and developer perspective, we found that our needs weren't being met in many areas simply just because of the product. In fact, like a lot of node services out there and a lot of just providers that are trying to provide data aren't providing you the complete data set. They might not be providing you the granular, what we like to call trace data, um, which is kind of the under the hood data that a lot of blockchain companies may need basically to service their customers. And we actually found that Google would give us the full suite, both what we, you know, as Nolan mentioned, the archive nodes, so essentially not just getting the last 128 blocks in the most recent history, but we were looking for the whole chain's history and the whole history of DeFi. Google Node Engine was able to provide that to us. In addition, we also were looking for very granular data, right? As you guys know, blockchains are these ledgers of different transactions. And these transactions get pretty complex. They might not just be a simple Ethereum transfer like me to Nullin, but it might be something super complex, like I call a very complex program on a smart contract, right? And that smart contract will call another smart contract. So go back to your programming days in college when you were thinking about stack traces and you're trying to trace through every single um, you know, call in the stack, right? That happens on blockchain and it's all done through value transfers. So we were trying to get a lot of that stack trace data and a lot of providers couldn't give that to us. Google could, and not only could they do it for us that way, but they could also provision a node dedicated just for us. What that kind of means is that a lot of different providers in the space, they like to kind of give you an API you can read and write data from. They might set a load balancer on top of a fleet of different nodes for you to kind of load balance across. But um, as you guys know, blockchains are asynchronous distributed systems, and not every node has the same perspective on the chain. They might believe that one state is different than the other. You might get requests to different nodes that believe in different states. So the problem there is that your API isn't item potent, and you don't get back the same response every time, and that makes for a horrible customer experience. Google gave us one node where the response would be the same every time, and that was super reliable and really easy to use. Um, additionally, also, one thing we really cared about, we're a seed stage company. We care a lot about pricing, right? Um, we want to make sure we're not blowing the bank out, and we you know, obviously have a limited amount of cash. Google was able to be really friendly to us, not just through their credits program, which I'll talk about in a second, but also through their fixed pricing program. We actually got unlimited access to a dedicated archive trace node for a really low amount of money a month. Um, and that wasn't really like, hard for us to get. And the Google team was super friendly and was able to give us access, as well as great customer support with their team. Um, so in terms of just the product perspective, Google really met our needs from a product perspective, but then also from a customer experience standpoint, was really able to work with us on things like pricing, customer experience, to get us the best in class service so we could serve our customers. 
Um, and I'll talk a little bit about, I guess, the Google Cloud Credits program. So again, when we started off, like not only were we able to get great pricing and, of course, a, an amazing service through the Google Node Engine or the Blockchain Node Engine, but we also were actually offered $200,000 in startup credits for our team. Um, as a C-stage company, obviously, we're trying to cut costs. We're trying to keep lean, especially in this market. Um, you know, obviously, blockchain companies are, are really going through it, right? And we want to make sure that we are staying lean, mean, and super fast. Um, and Google was able to help us out with that and give us basically $200,000 um, to be able to spend on whether that's server infrastructure, cloud infrastructure, node infrastructure, and really the whole gamut. Um, so this is really helpful for us because right now, obviously, we're doing lower traffic than we would be in one to two to three, four years. As we look to scale up and as we look to actually bring about more customers, actually scale up our traffic, Google scales with us and is able to give us, you know, obviously a lot of money, of course, to, to be able to support that, but also the enterprise grade infrastructure, as Nan had mentioned, for us to support our operations really effectively. Um, so we've been really pleased with the experience and obviously happy to talk more about any questions um, or any specific things. But, um, but essentially, yeah, that's my experience with Google Blockchain Node Engine. I know that um, I know they're in closed beta right now, if I'm correct, um, or have you guys open access yet? Fully public. It's fully public now? Public. Okay, cool. I remember when we had first met, it was kind of like in that transitioning stage. Um, but yeah, it's a really great service. I've been very pleased with the experience. Um